So um, landscape function differs from biodiversity assessment, which many people here will be familiar with, in that we are specifically looking at the goods and services provided by plants in order to maintain the ecosystem we're working with. And we're specifically looking at the much broader issues of landscape where, and where they are located. So landscape function addresses the questions, how does this system work, rather than what, it's, uh, what are its uh, species? What's gone wrong with this system with respect to stresses and disturbances, and I'll be elaborating on this shortly, and how can that system be repaired if we want to make better use of that landscape in the future? Biodiversity questions are more like what species are present, what species are declining or are under, under threat, and are some species increasing and are they weeds? So you can see the, the, the questions are entirely different, but in my view, we need to be addressing both sets of questions at the same time in order to achieve a wiser management outcome. So we found in our research that we needed to look at a range of spatial scales in order to be able to make sense of the landscapes we were looking at. So the main questions are, with respect to this are, how does this landscape work as a biophysical system. And I use the system in the, in the classical sense of uh, having inputs and outputs and feedbacks. Second question is how does current management affect productive potential? Are we in a long-term downward trend? Are we maintaining the productive potential? Or is the current management actually improving the management potential? And I know there are people in this room who are actually achieving that, so <clears throat> Um, I know it's possible. The other question, the third question is how does climatic variation affect functioning? In this morning's talk by James we talked about uh, Tasmania where the climate is somewhat more predictable and reliable than many areas in the mainland where, where uh, a lot of my work's gone on. So it's the variability in the climate which makes these lands quite difficult to manage. And the fourth question is, if there's been a decline in productive potential, what can be done to turn it around? I know there are a lot of people who enjoy saying how bad things are and how they ought to be better, but too few are actually uh, turning their minds to figuring out what can we actually do about it and can we make a difference um, to the way these, these landscapes are managed. So our challenge uh, back in the mid-70s when I started this work was, um, what sort of data collected from that little bare space between the pegs could have told us that there was a productive potential expressed in the bottom picture after rain fell. So very often um, our question was how can we distinguish bare and productive soil from bare but unproductive soil? And a lot of my colleagues who were mainly botanists, I can remember, used to return to the lab very disappointed they'd been out to do a survey and there were no plants. I'm never disappointed. Whenever I go out into the bush, there's always some soil to look at. It's got something to tell me every time I go. 